Hello. So um, I wanted to go over my gyrarium and I will show you what I found. Um, so this was my jar when I first added um, the sediment and algae to it. Um, I hope this zooms in when I do. Nope. Um, so there were lots and lots and lots of zooplankton in there and that got me really excited hoping that it would all live. Um, the base it looked like didn't have a lot of sediment on it. Some roots but not that much um, deposits and then the top was algae that was like floating. Um, so I assumed it was all like very active, um, photosynthetic with bubbles, but that was just on the first day. This is a video of it. To show swimming, little swimmers. Um, and so this was after a couple of days, maybe the next day, um, the algae mass had started to fall. And I was like, that doesn't look good. That's probably just gonna like be decaying and not produce oxygen, um, but deplete all the oxygen um, as it breaks down. And this was a couple of days later, uh, all the algae had basically fallen. Um, and that got me more concerned. You can see on the top, oops, just kidding. You can almost see on the top. Back. Sorry. Um, you can see on the top, there are some bubbles forming, um, but it wasn't enough to even support itself. And so that got me worried um, about the health of my jar. So I decided that I wanted to make an addition. Um, this was after the algae had all fallen and this is outside. Um, you can see how like tea stained the water is, so probably high in carbon. Um, but I wanted to add something to it and take a bunch of this algae out because I was like, this is all decaying matter. This isn't gonna produce. Um, and so this was, I don't know, a close up of just like, you can still see creatures living, but not a lot of stuff going on in the algae. When I opened the lid, I found these inside the jar and the jar hadn't been opened since um, we first added it, added all the nutrients to it. And so we found a bunch of these flies, it looks like mating maybe. Um, and so I thought that was cool that they grew inside the jar and then they made their way to the surface to fly away. Um, I was adding the parrot feather that Darren gave me and I found one snail, but I was like, oh, it'll probably be fine. They probably don't reproduce that much, but observe, here's a snail going into the system as another organism. And so this was with the parrot feather added. There still is a lot of zooplankton. You can see on the bottom left here, they're throughout this whole area. But as the parrot feather, um, whoa, there we go. As the parrot feather got established um, at the top, it grew and supported itself, held up with air. And this other like decaying algae started to fall. Um, and so that made me happy to see. Um, and you can see it's on a bright windowsill, so it gets plenty of sun. This window gets morning sun. Um, and then 
by afternoon it's indirect so it doesn't get too hot. I think this is a video of the zooplankton swimming around. This was when it switched from, um, I call them T-bone <laughs> red zooplankton to more Daphnia. And this was when a bunch of babies had just been born. So I've had multiple generations of Daphnia in the tank now, not the tank, but the jar. Um, and so this is like a video you can see of like photosynthesis happening, a little zooplankton swimming. And so this made me super happy of like, this is working. This is awesome. Um, Think. Yeah, and there's just a final photo. So it was overall like a success. It was a good time. I enjoyed having this jar and I think I want to keep it um, for possibly ever. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Oh, and I had pictures of once I added the parrot feather, then there were lots of bubbles at the top, which I didn't have before. And so I was thankful that like this edition now I had more oxygen to add to the system. Um, that's my jar.